it's Timmy B. Pretty D. Fight in sight. Yeah, that's right. Oh, kind of messed it up. <laughs> it's all good. All right, let's start. Hello, Fight Insight fans, listeners, viewers. Today we have a very special guest. Um, Tim's going to introduce him. But we also today we also uh, have uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Fight On Site um, yeah. Edition, which is going to be very exciting, and also many more. We are going to have a very fun packed uh, episode for today. And so you know what. Tim, take care it away. Introduce our guests. All right. So our guest today, um, this is crazy. So I came across this individual on UFC Fight Pass, and um, well, we'll we'll get into it. But this individual, uh, he was a nationally ranked gymnast in the United States. Uh, went on to become a coach, coached as an assistant coach at Penn State University and other and other great places. Uh, he then transitioned into jujitsu where he now owns a gym, Impact Fountain Hills Jiu-Jitsu, Impact Fountain Hills Jiu-Jitsu in Arizona. Uh, he's big into movement, big into Jiu-Jitsu. He's a competitive Jiu-Jitsu practitioner. And also recently, and this is where I know him, competed in combat Jiu-Jitsu, which we definitely want to ask him about. Please welcome our guest, Mr. Michael Courier. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Michael, going? welcome buddy. Good Thank to you see you. Me. Yeah, good to be here. Hey, cool, man. Um, I do have to ask you, first off, how famous are you from this combat jujitsu that you did? Like, this was pretty crazy. It was pretty good. I think, uh, well, I, I, I think I picked up about 500 new followers overnight. Yeah, okay. Uh, just from that, you know. But, you know, it, I think it was a combination where I had... Uh, you know, at one point on the UFC Fight Pass Instagram page, three of the most recent nine videos were me. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, it was me getting my ass kicked, but it was me. So <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> no. And I mean, and that and that is kind of weird, like, you know, to kind of be talking to you about that. But this brings into play, like, what the heck is combat jujitsu? Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, I think, Prince, we want to ask Mike about who he is right that's it so mike first question but so we want we want to know like fight inside fans listeners viewers we all want to know so who is michael carrier like yeah <laughs> let Dude, us know, know. Like, what's going on it's been I, I've, I've had a crazy life man i think um um this is like the the fourth niche sport that i've been famous in i mean like where it's been like you know i i was a uh, i was a nationally ranked gymnast um, you know, I, I worked for Cirque du Soleil. Um, what? Uh, yeah. So up, they actually, they, they scouted me in high school up in Montreal. And that's um, crazy. And really? Then, uh, I, I worked for, um, a stunt, a stunt man place in or, or in, in Orlando, Florida. I did stunts for a living. Um, I was a professional inline skater. I've got like magazine covers and stuff. And, uh, so it's like, it's just interesting. I think, uh, every, every step along my life. I have found this um, weird little sport that I've gotten decent enough at to be able to do it for a living. And so uh, that's just, I mean, now I'm, I'm 40 years old and I'm still playing and just, you know, I haven't had a real job really ever. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like. Oh man, but Mike, but, but Mike, listen, man, you make yeah. man make me feel bad. Man. I barely made my ultimate frisbee team. I got cut <laughs> first round. Like, I'm like, coach, please put me in, man, and and look at your life. Like all, look at all the stuff you've accomplished, man. That's amazing. So it's been hold a good on. Life. Before I mean, this interview goes off on a total tangent, yeah. I mean, what what Cirque du Soleil were you in? Were so you this was back. This is like in the '90s, right? And so this is when they had one troop. And uh, okay. they basically powwowed up in Montreal. Um, and then they had little places where you would go to uh, to kind of practice for shows. And so, um, you know, I was, let's see, I was 18 years old. Um, I had been planning on attending Penn State for a gymnastics scholarship. And um, I literally snuck away a weekend and I signed a contract with the Army. And I joined the army instead and like went home and said, Hey mom, like I'm not doing college or circ or anything. I'm going to join the army. 
And so, um, so yeah, it was, it was like a, a, a you know, a, a brief stint with them. And then I came back to it a little bit and then trained with them. I got a bunch of friends who I worked with on the love show, which is like the, 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 the Beatles, the Beatles one. show in line Vegas and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, rollerblading was really, really big in that show. And so we did a lot with that. That's awesome. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, it was cool, you know, but I've, I've always had commitment issues. So it was like when it was time for me to, <laughs> you know, uh, do anything for real, I was like, I'm going to be a hippie and just travel and do weird Ma shit. Mike, you know what? That's what I was thinking. Like, I have got a visual image of you just literally just by the road with your knapsack and all yeah. like ripped up jean, uh, jean jacket. Just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm taking a hike out of this town. I'm on to the next town. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, I mean, yeah, and that, yeah. that really is it. I mean, you know, I, I moved from couch to couch i had i owned a suitcase full of clothes for like almost seven years but that's all i had you know i lived i lived under an overpass in philadelphia um like literally up under the overpass like on the highway <laughs> and uh that's where i lived you know and uh so incredible it's, just, you know, it, it's been a wild adventure and so now your life has taken you into jujitsu which is yeah. now this is your current love of your life yeah yeah uh and so talk to us about impact yeah. Fountain Hills. So, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I, I grew up, I'm, I'm from Ohio originally. I grew up wrestling. Um, my grandfather owned a Kempo karate school. So I have a martial arts background since I was like three years old. Um, but I was 33 years old. I had a, um, you know, a four-year-old kid. And we went to this jungle gym. It was like, uh, it's called Safari Sands. It was like, a, it's, it's closed now, but it was kind of like an indoor play place for kids. And um, like two doors down was a Taekwondo school that had jujitsu. And um, my wife and I walked in. I said, hey, we should try this. And so um, I ran home. I grabbed some sweatpants and I went to class. And uh, it happened to be Impact Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, I, I went home. I said, yo, I love this. Like, we, we, have, to, we have to do this forever. And so... <laughs> Um, I did my first tournament, like after three weeks of training and, uh, was like, let's just do this. Let's go all in. And, uh, you know, at the time my wife had just started, uh, her doctorate program at university of Portland. And so we kind of knew that, you know, we were only going to be in Portland for six years and then we were gone because we didn't like it there. Um, we were just there for her school. And so, um, you know, I made the decision after like a month of doing jujitsu that like I had to get a black belt in six years. And I'm like, you know, I, I've, I've got to be good enough that I can open a gym. And um, so I was doing 40 plus hours a week of jujitsu. And um, I bought my first gym about 16 months into training uh, with my coach. And then we expanded to a bigger gym and then um, we moved away and I uh, opened up the impact down here in Fountain Hills. That is crazy. And I mean, you know, we've talked about this before on the podcast, Prince, about coaches, right? And about mm -hmm. the personalities and things like that. Because Mike, when we when I see you on Instagram, and I follow you around, man, you are a very likable guy on nice. camera, right? Like, and in person, too. Yeah. But on camera, I mean, you can tell you've got that coach, that coach's mentality. Because sure. you're kind of the guy that's very, like, you know, works with the people, talks with the people, yeah. enjoys being around people. So that whole gymnastic background must have been a huge benefit for your movement in jujitsu, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, I think that, um, you know, not, not only the movement, but, you know, I, I started coaching gymnastics when I was 15. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, coaching is coaching is coaching. I think once you find, uh, find your rhythm, uh, it's easy to, uh, to convey your message to anybody you're teaching, you know? And so, yeah. but with, as far as the movement goes, it was funny because, the the first instinct in jujitsu is to fall back on your wrestling, you know, because you grew up wrestling and uh, and so that held me back so much. I mean, I'm 140 pounds. I'm a small guy, and um, I came from a gym that was mostly big guys, and I was trying to wrestle. You know, I'm, I'm trying to do wrestling, and you know, in in wrestling, there's never an open class match, right? You're only wrestling somebody your own weight. There's right. never an open class, right? And usually it's like five or six pounds difference, you know? So I'm looking at guys who are my wrestling works great against guys your size. Um, but when you got a guy who's 200 pounds, maybe he's a blue belt and you're brand new and I'm trying to wrestle him. <laughs> I was getting smashed, you know? And uh, yeah. 
And so I was really frustrated. I thought, man, what am I doing here? And uh, I love my coach, but he was a very uh, MMA heavy, very, uh, you know, 180 pounds, super athletic young guy. And, and uh, he, he had a hard time telling me how to make up for my inadequacies. Right. And so um, I, I, I tell the story over and over again, but there was a Jeff Glover versus Bill Cooper match. Um, they were, they were teammates, but they made the finals of this invitational in Japan and they had a match for the finals. And, um, I watched that match and it completely changed my life. You know, like I saw this guy who was doing more of a gymnastics, like a B-boy style jujitsu. And I thought, holy shit, I, I can do that. Like I, I can do what he's doing, you know? And I went back into the gym and, um, you know, luckily impact was a family that allowed me to try weird stuff. You know, don't forget that, I mean, this is only six years ago, but six years ago, people were still having the debate if deep half was going to be a thing or not. Like, right. this is not really, you know, so Baron Bolos was like, what are you doing? You know, but my gym was all about it. I said, hey, you know, figure out your, figure out your way. And uh, so I started doing more of the, more of the gymnastics style and uh, started mixing in, you know, inverted guard and all that kind of stuff. And it really kind of hit home. And uh, I was able to run with that, you know, and, and, and they say, okay, now my movement, now my flexibility, now my aerial awareness and my ability to do handstands and all kinds of weird stuff, uh, can work really well for jujitsu. Uh, and then about, you know, midway to my purple belt, I started bringing the wrestling back in, you know? And so now that I have a foundation, I can use some of the wrestling when, you know, when it, when it's applicable, but, um, but the movement, everything, everything comes back to my gymnastics background. It, it's literally helped me uh, in every aspect of my life. You know, when I was a professional skater, um, people used to literally say like, Oh, of course you can do that. You used to be a gymnast. And I <laughs> yeah. used to be upset about that. Like I used to think it was like, they were, they were, you know, they were not being nice to me because they were saying, of course I can do that. Of course I was good at basketball because I was a gymnast. Like, mm. but I, I worked my butt off to be a good gymnast, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. I've um, trained all my life and, and, exactly. and made like, myself well, an athlete. Right. It wasn't just given to me, you know? And so, um, yeah, man, I think that foundationally for, for athletes, man, having that gymnastics foundation, you just can't beat it. Nice. Yeah, so you know what? In terms of uh, – so, Mike, in terms of uh, your home gym, so impact uh, jiu-jitsu. So, like, say, uh, you know, somebody coming from, you know, from Canada or just coming down to train in your area. So, like, what, what would we expect? Like, say there was something that, you know, you would come down and check out that gym. Like, what would be a beginner like maybe such as myself who's coming yeah. in and wanting to know more about it and hearing your story too and wanting to learn more about this uh, jiu-jitsu? Like, what do we expect at your gym? You know, uh, one of my big rules is uh, I, I don't teach to beginners. Okay, so I've always said I'm going to teach the class. I'm going to teach. Um, my goal is that you retain about 10% of what I taught, right? And so um, I would uh, I would much rather you get the gist of it and understand what jiu-jitsu is supposed to look like mm -hmm. than to master one thing and have no idea how to find that thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest uh, uh, separation from what I've seen in, in, in traditional martial arts or traditional jiu-jitsu. You come to class, they teach you one technique kind of in, in, you know, in this vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get yeah. really good at knowing maybe 100 techniques perfectly. But when it comes time to sparring or having live roles, you don't know how to link those together and you can't find them. And mm -hmm. so you end up kind of lost. And so um, we teach... Uh, everything based off of a flow. And so you'll learn kind of, um, you know, seven moves in one day that all kind of flow together. Oh, that's so cool. And so the goal is that you can do all of those things in the flow poorly, but you can do them. Right. And yeah. so you're going to, you're going to miss the arm bar. You're going to miss the guard pass, but mm -hmm. you're recognizing how things link together because ultimately jujitsu is about the connections, not about the techniques. So. Mike, you should you should patent that. Yeah. You should just you should have a name for it, man. I, I like it because it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not, it's non traditional. It's just like you come in and just you just go with the flow. 
Yeah. And then later on, you start, you know, it's just everything, the mechanics all starts to link, yeah. and then you just start figuring it out on your own, right? It's like, you know, you, like, like you're going from Muay Thai, okay, you do your stance, you right, left, block, all this, right? But with that, I mean, that's that's kind of unique, man, especially if someone wants to go give it a try. I mean, maybe yeah. they'll even learn more, right? So well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I think awesome. that, you know, it, 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 the hard part is that people want that, people want that, that, um, they want to have a submission every class Pe- people like to learn that right they they want to have this they want to have this climax yeah that's yeah. why that's why i partner with prince yes it's a, it's a guaranteed yeah, submission but, right yeah this guy's literally every time going for the legs i'm like can you relax man calm it down yeah. and then you just got to give them a good square punch in their dick I'm yeah sorry. of course <laughs> that's yeah. it that's how you get the job that's how you you break out or you tap yeah. out early Right. Yeah. So you know, we hey, we also we also teach heel hooks at white belt, you know, and so, um, you know, we uh, we were a very polite school. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, if, if I rear naked choke, I don't care if it's a choke, if it's a neck crank, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, if you want to be a crazy wrist locker, you can do that. Um, but, you know, we have I mean, so your first day might be coming in on a day that I'm teaching K guard entries to heel hooks mm-hmm. and. Uh, Hey, that's your first day. That's your first day. It is what it is. Wow. You know? <laughs> so, you- and, uh, so, but I think that, um, uh, what we see is this tends to make mediocre, if not poor white belts, but it makes really, really good higher level belts. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And I think so often we get really, really good at beating other white belts. And then we get really, really good at beating other blue belts. And we get good at these individual kind of transition points. What happens is that often doesn't translate to being a good black belt, right? And so um, my, my goal, and I tell my guys all the time, is like, I, you know, if you win a world championship at white belt, you're the best, worst dude out there, right? Like, <laughs> the I don't best want of the worst. Guys, <laughs> the best of the worst, right? Like, it's such an odd thing to have world champ. You know, congrats if you win world to, you know, white belt, that's fine. But yeah. at the end of the day, like, I would rather you be a, a, a dreadful, color belt and an excellent black belt you know mm-hmm. because yeah that's what the, the the end goal is you know um and oftentimes you see guys really get stuck at, at brown belt or they get to their black belt and they just haven't really learned to put it together yet you know and so uh it, it, it's a it's a longer mm-hmm. learning curve for us but i think the 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 end result is going to be a stronger result oh man I, really- I, I i can see myself out of the first day out of mike's class tim it'll be like this hey ma Hey ma, I learned how to do it. Let me show you how to do a oh, heel yeah. hook. So, <laughs> I learned the <day> first day, <laughs> right? So, super safe. It's fine. Yeah, right? yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you can't get hurt. No, um, I think that. Yeah. So, Mike, you know, we again, like I want to tell people. So, first of all, we're gonna put, you know, how to follow you down in in the YouTube and stuff like that. Um, we'll put all your links, um, and we'll talk about it at the end. But so when I first saw you. Yeah. Right. It's on UFC Fight Pass. So whoever has UFC Fight Pass, go check it out. But I'm going to show a screenshot here. This is what caught me. And this is this happy guy here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And he's, you know, BJ Penn style. He's pulling off the blood and he's got it on. And I mean, so you're in this combat jujitsu, which is now a whole different world of jujitsu, right? Because. Sure. Yeah. Combat jiu-jitsu, for those that don't know, it's jiu-jitsu competition, but they allow strikes, mm-hmm. open hand strikes, yep. and I read they also allow up kicks. No. Is that? No. No? No. no. Okay, so no. no I kick. thought it was no up kicks, and then as I was doing research, I, I came across a website that said up kicks. Okay. That would have, that would have helped me so much. Well, this, awesome. Yeah, this is what I'm saying, because, yeah, yeah. so, okay, so you can open hand, but Only you can't. Palm open palm but you can't do it while you're standing correct okay and, and this grounded and this came from the mind of eddie bravo yeah Is that- and I th- yeah i think you know because so if you know the history of 10th of planet mm-hmm. um, you know eddie bravo's rubber guard was an mma guard okay um, and and the whole point is with with rubber guard i can completely stop you from punching me right uh, it's perfect for that and um it evolved into sport jujitsu and they have a whole different realm, of, a whole different realm of, of what rubber guard looks like. And I think, uh, you know, from what Eddie says, um, he just wanted to get back to the roots of it and, and show that, you know, you could use striking to set up jujitsu and you could use 
jujitsu to stop striking. And right. yeah, the, the, this was the most pure way to do it. You know, we don't have to work from the feet. We know what happens in the feet. You know, if you're on the feet, then you're not doing jujitsu anyway, right? You're, you're looking okay. at other striking arts. This is what happens after the fight hits the ground, you know? And so they even have a get down rule. So you can only be standing for 30 seconds and then you have to go to the ground because the emphasis of jujitsu is what happens then. And so okay. um, it, it takes the emphasis off of the grappling because, you know, don't forget at the end of the day, if I'm in a street fight, I'm not looking to go to the ground. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, I think we may have a little bit of a connection problem. You there, Prince? I'm there. Mike? Or he's totally pausing to fool us. <laughs> but I think he might be out. Hold on one sec. We'll see. Uh, we we'll see if he comes guard. back here. It's a full guard. Which, <laughs> this is what a rubber guard does. It, says, it totally, yeah. totally yeah, sticks you. Hold yeah, on. Let me. Uh, he's in one spot. I'm going to kick him out here and then see if he'll come back in. Let's see if he joins back up. But mm -hmm. um, hopefully he does. Hopefully he does. Um, so, you know, the, the video that I'm watching of him, and, and so mm -hmm. I'll talk about it but while he's gone, um, he's in guard, and the other guy is on top and just starts throwing down yeah. strikes with open palm. Okay, here mm -hmm. he is. He's back. Hold on. Hey, sorry, How's it going, guys. Mike? No, no, no worries. So I was just saying the, the video that I saw you in was where you're in guard, like you're talking yep. about, you're in guard, and the other guy postures up, and then he starts throwing palm strikes. Yeah. And I was thinking in my head, I'm like, man, it would be nice if this guy could upkick here. Oh, of course. Because he doesn't, <laughs> right? Because it was like that would be another uh, limb for you to counterattack with. For sure. Yeah. Give me, give and, me a tool. You know. Yeah. And during the fight, though, man, the crowd went crazy when you ended up throwing a left hook from the ground. <laughs> yeah. And you throw a left hook, and I mean, with open palm. Yeah. But it hits him so hard, and the whole crowd. <laughs> Goes, oh, like, goes yeah, like, Mike. Whoa, yeah, whoa. When, when you landed that left, yeah. I'm like, Mike, just keep going, keep going. Right, I'm like, that's the right. I'm literally, I'm in there just because you know what? You you, you had him down, and he just, he just kept when I'm my, my first time seeing him, like, you're allowed to do this, like, this is yeah. nuts. And when he was squaring you, and you got him with the left, I'm like, oh man, he better come up and just yeah. like it's round and pound him, right? Actually, you know what? Before we, we continue with this, uh, with uh, talking about this fight, which is crazy, you know what, Mike? Maybe explain to the to our viewers what a rubber guard is. Yeah, so basically, rubber guard, we're looking at getting our legs. You know, traditionally, guard is kind of like at the belt level, right? So I have my ankles crossed around your waist, okay, um, yeah. around the small of your back, kind of under your rib cage. So when mm -hmm. you play rubber guard, you walk your guard up higher so that your thighs are in their armpits, and then mm -hmm. you can have your uh, your shin ends up being perpendicular or parallel to the shoulders across the back. Yeah. And then I can use my my arm to grab my own leg, right? Yes. Right. I grab you and, and kind of keep you pinned to me. And, and, so, that's what, and that's what we often see in MMA when guys will employ the rubber guard. They're really doing it to kind of totally put a pause to the fight to get it stood up. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Which is where it works great. You know, yeah. ultimately, you know, any type of a closed guard, um, you you can't get up with it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're 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 locking yourself to someone. I can stop them from punching me, but I can't get up with rubber guard. Right. Rubber guard. It can be used to make a, a submission happen. But ultimately, we're looking at just trying to stop the strikes from happening. And actually, right. at one point within, you know, in my match, um, I had rubber guard and yeah. they, they yeah. reset effects in the middle. I had rubber guard. I felt strong there, but it, it wasn't. It's I, I, I'm completely incapable of stalling a match out. For, for better or for worse, you know, I think that like, it's just, it's just not what I do, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. I, I, I thought, you know, I can hold this guy here. I could probably hold him for four minutes mm -hmm. and get to overtime, you know, but um, I just, I like, I like fighting. Yeah. <laughs> and so, know, yeah. And well, Mike, actually just wanted to ask yeah, you also, please. like, how did you, how did you see that fight going? Like, what, what did you, how did you want it to like, you know, go your way? Like, how did you yeah. want it to, uh, you know, like in terms of you, what was your next step after you pulled that rubber guard? Because I saw you pull that rubber guard and go, okay, I wonder what he's going to do next, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that the, the it went how I thought it would go. I mean, I knew David was going to be, you know, a, an, an MMA guy. You know, he didn't try to pass guard. Uh -oh. He didn't try to submit me. He just wanted to sit in my guard and just 
throw strikes, you know? And oh, so, so you knew, oh, so you knew that from, from oh, knowing yeah, that guy. I mean, yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I, I expected it. I knew it. Um, I wanted it, you know, I thought this was fine. You know, I think one of the biggest problems with that fight was, um, it didn't hurt, you know, like it doesn't hurt to get hit, you know, you're fine. And so, uh, I wasn't like fake laughing. Like I thought it was hilarious, you know, like yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're doing this thing and he's punching, he's, he's, you know, <laughs> smacking me, I'm smacking him. Yeah. Um, and everything was fine. You know, uh, we made, it was about a seven minute long out of 10 minute long match. Um, it wasn't until that last flurry that he cut my eye open that it got bad, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so the, the downfall of the whole thing was my reluctantness to, to defend because it wasn't, it wasn't knocking me out. Right. Like I wasn't like getting dazed. And so I didn't care if I get cut, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. Like mm -hmm. it's all part of what we do. I wanted to, you know, I've been in jujitsu matches. I've never been in an MMA fight. I wanted to get bloody. I mean, that, that was yeah. the plan. I mean, ask anybody leading up to it. I was like, this is going to be awesome. Like, I hope I get hit hard, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wanted, you know? And so, yeah. um, so everything was, everything was, you know, how I thought it would be, you know, but when my eye got cut, uh, I, I was talking to the ref and yeah, um, it seemed, it seemed like you were. Yeah. It, so he was, he asked me if I was okay. I said, yeah, I'm fine. You know? And I was, I was defending and I was, I was like, look for a couple leg locks, look for a couple triangles. Um, you know, I, I was, I was playing what I wanted to play. And, um, he said, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. He said, can you see? And I said, I'm fine. And he said, can you see? And I said, I'm fine. <laughs> and then he said, can you see? And, you know, there is no blood time. So they're not going to stop and wipe your face okay, and okay. get back into it. And, um, you know, once blood got into my eye, I couldn't see. And yeah, so yeah. Uh, I said, I can't see. And he stopped it, you know. So, um, but yeah, it wasn't like it was, a, it wasn't like a, a, I was rocked or dazed, nothing like that. I mean, I popped right up and I was fine. And, and uh, you know, and ultimately, like, dude, I lose. I, I mean, it happens. It happens to all of us. And, uh uh, you will never find like a happier loser. Like, well, <laughs> I just I, but, I love when people win, even when it's not me. But it's funny because uh, it reminds me of the fight that happened this weekend, Vittori versus Holland. And I don't know if you saw, but when Holland gets poked in the eye, and then the ref kept like you could tell he was like having a lot of problems. It was yeah, yeah. swelling up, and then the ref went over to him, and as clear as day in the cam in the mic, you can hear him go, "Can you see? Can you see?" And Holland goes, "What do you mean?" I, yeah. what what do you, and he kept like answering like really weirdly kind right. of like I, what you're saying you were doing you you're just careful. like yeah i'm good i don't know yeah you gotta yeah. be careful how you answer that you yeah. know yeah. and uh and so did i you know I, i've got a uh, uh no regrets about it at all you know i think that i guess the, the only thing that uh, that even a little bit upset me was that um you know only that last flurry was shown you know at first you know and, and the yeah. match wasn't as one-sided as that one flurry made it look like you know mm -hmm. and so um, but even with that, man, like I've got thick skin, dude, you can't, you can't bother me. I've, I've, I've been through the ringer, you know? And so, no, well, yeah, um, you, you definitely do have thick skin because I'm going to post something from your Instagram. I was dying laughing when I saw this, <laughs> but you're at, you're at a seminar and, uh, I'm assuming this guy is your friend. I hope he is your friend, but there is this here and it says, uh, two, two hour guard. Hold on. I got to take this thing off here. It says two hour guard passing seminar from a guy that hasn't passed guard since he was a purple belt. By that logic, you should check out my combat jujitsu seminar next week. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a guy for sure that is, uh, definitely, you know, having a good time with it all oh. and, uh, enjoying the whole thing. Right. So, I mean, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I'm still out there fighting 20 year olds. I get invited to these shows. They flew me to Cancun. I was in a resort on the beach, you know, wow. and it's just, how can you be mad about it? You know, we're, 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 we're grown men in spandex wrestling around and we get paid <laughs> to do it. Like you can't take yourself too seriously. Hey, but you know what, Mike, I, I find that with this video that just popped at the fight pass, I mean, this, this, with this, uh, um, the fight you just had, you're like the face of combat jujitsu now. I know. Like, uh, regardless if you lost or not, like you, you're gonna be yeah. like you're you're no. known for to be that guy. Hey, it's that guy that got all bloodied up, yeah, yeah. and he still, you know, he was still ready to go. They just could have should have left yeah. him uh, go and uh, fight another round, right? So no, I, funny, I yeah. the, the the first thing my wife said uh, to my team, who are, you know they're all back here watching me, you know, she said, even though Mike lost, he'll find a way to steal the show. 
<laughs> yeah, well, they did. They definitely have like highlighted you. And I mean, and for anybody that wants to see the fight, if you don't have Fight Pass, um, you can watch it on your. You have it on your YouTube, right? Do, on yeah. your YouTube channel, do, it's yeah. there, so you can watch. Yeah. And you can see what we're talking about because, man. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to post it and get people to go see because before they listen to this podcast, I'm gonna try and get people to watch because if they haven't seen it, you know, it's definitely something to see. And you talk about going around, and, and I know you're competing um all around and like you said you're going to cancun and going all around the states competing is this uh like you're able to make good money from this like i i don't know you know there's a lot of people like prince and i train in toronto and and there's the jujitsu classes there and things like that and you see people getting serious but it's one of those things like is there a life to be made from this you know i, I so it's kind of like it's like it's it's a three-tier program right you got tier one is learning jujitsu Right. Tier two is doing all the, the things you can do, you know, competing, whether it's, uh, you know, your, your goal is professional, right? Your goal is to do the, all the pro events. Okay. Tier three is now you have enough recognition where you can do seminars. Right. Mm. And so that's where the money is, you know, so you okay, tier, okay. Tier, tier one, you're paying to learn. Tier two, you're kind of breaking even. Right. And tier three, you make money. And so, um, you know, I did jiu-jitsu overtime, which was uh, another EBI event. Yep. Um, they they paid me a thousand bucks, you know, to show up for that one. Okay. Um, you know, um, so it's usually, obviously, if you win, that's great. You know, I think, uh, you know, Elias, he won like 15 or making it with like seven or eight thousand dollars from from Combat Worlds. You know, okay. um, Third Coast Grappling just did a fifteen thousand dollar event, you know, but. 15 dudes lost and got nothing. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and a lot of the times you got these events, uh, submission only series is a really, really good up and coming event. Um, a guy named Mike Wilson, he's a 10th planet black, but not a 10th planet orange. He runs it. It's a great show. Um, but you buy into it, you know, so it costs you a hundred dollars to compete. You walk out with two grand if you win. Um, and those are becoming kind of the most like the, the most normal, you know, um, Fight to win is not paying anybody right now, uh, but they were paying. You know, you, you can make decent money there if you if you brought your team. You know, I did fight to win last in what January of 2020. Um, I think I sold like 40 or 50 tickets to the show, and I think I made like a thousand bucks. Right, right, you know? right. And so um, you you definitely can't live off of it. You know, okay. it's not like that. So, but you know, in my in my mind, it's just honestly, it's about getting that recognition, you know, yeah. um, you know, yep. as a gym, as a gym owner, um, the absolute best thing that comes out of these events is the fight poster. You know, uh, I have a fight poster. Yeah, I keep it awesome. all framed on the wall of the gym. Uh, mm. it's corny. It's like a big tribute to myself, but <laughs> when people, it's awful. But when yeah. people come in and they come off the street and they see all these fight posters that all these pro events that I've done, I mean, mm. submission underground Two, John Jones versus Dan Henderson was the headliner. I was on that card. You know, yeah. so to have these posters with John Jones and me on there, um, it immediately makes somebody who doesn't know anything about jujitsu they see that and they go, "Oh man, this guy is somebody." This guy's the real about. thing. It's yeah, sure. he's credible. Yep. He's he's the thing. For yep. combat jujitsu, were you training striking? Like at no, what point? I mean, at, no? You know, honestly, like we we did a couple things here and there. Um, you know, but if you look at if you look at how all the combat goes, I mean. 99% of the matches are 99% jujitsu. You know, there's not a lot of striking that happens. Most guys, you know, most guys were talking backstage and they're like, I'm, I'm not even going to try to strike, you know, like I'm, I'm here to do jujitsu. Right. You know? right, right. Um, yeah. and, and that really is, you know, even, even Eddie Bravo talks about that, you know, let's, let, let's use our striking to advance our jujitsu. Let's not just have a striking fight, you know? And so the whole point is to, um, you know, help your guard passing via strikes or to set up a triangle because the guy's defending a strike or he throws a strike and you throw up a triangle, you know, to right, show right. how yeah. we can exploit weaknesses of striking. Um, the, the goal is not to uh, have a, ha have a TKO happen. You know, there's, there's been three of them ever mm. in, in, yeah. in EBI combat, you know, and so Keith Corian had one and Wagner Hosha TKO'd um, Nathan Orchard, you know, and so, um, and then me. And so there's just, it doesn't happen very often. And so, um, you know, I thought, I honestly got, I thought that, um, 
of that pick, David Weintraub was a great draw for me. You know, but he was again, he, but he was the only guy that was going to throw strikes. Everybody yeah, else did, yeah. did too. This is no knock on him at all. I mean, he, no, no, no. Hey, it's no, it's it, how that sport is going to evolve, exactly. right? But I think what's yeah. cool is that you know the 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 beauty of the event for me was seeing um, David's next match was against Ben Eddy, and Ben Eddy has developed a rubber guard that is perfect, and and, uh, and knowing that David was going to sit in Ben's guard. I don't think David hit Ben once. Right, you know, right. David conceded guard immediately, sat in Ben's closed guard, got locked up, and got that orchard. You know, and so nice. uh, it just shows you that that the the game can work so brilliantly against striking when that's your emphasis or when that's what you you think about. Um, you know, and and that's not what I was thinking about. I, I wanted to go out there and do jujitsu. You know, and, yeah, yeah. and like I said, had had I gotten hit and been like, oh, that hurt. Maybe I would have, I would have acted differently, you know. But uh, so, just, it was fun. Actually, Michael, let me so let me just uh, ask just for our viewers also. So, yeah. like quick Cole's notes, like so, what's the big difference between uh, combat jujitsu and uh, regular jujitsu? So, like just in case people are trying to they need to differentiate too, is there like any other rules that we should know about aside from like the slapping of the hands and? Um, That's really it. I mean, everything else is the exact same. Uh, we're just looking at ground strikes. Okay. Uh, you know, and and. Um, you know, if you guys, I'm sure you guys know Boss Root, and Boss Root made the open palm yeah. strike mm -hmm. very famous. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, um, so it's bare knuckle, so there is no wrap, something like that. And so, um, you know, the, the the guys who can throw a good a good palm strike have a great advantage. You know, and I think that um, you know I, I kept giving everyone crap going into it because I said, oh, you know, it's, it's slap fighting, and uh, mm -hmm. no, like, <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's slap boxing, slap, slap boxing, boxing, right? Right, but you see that there are, there were guys who were slapping. You know, mm -hmm. and they're just kind of yeah. like yeah. goofing, and, and it, it doesn't hurt. And, and it, not only does it not hurt, it's just not effective. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, but David, he proved that man; those those things can cut you open. And so, um, but yeah, that that's really the only difference. All, all submissions are still allowed. Um, mm -hmm. It runs; it's a ten minute long match with uh, EBI overtime rounds. Um, if if you go there, there's no striking allowed in the overtime. The overtime is straight grappling. Oh, okay. Ooh, so okay. after that, 10 minutes. Yeah. Yep. And so they originally had uh, striking allowed in the OT. But if you're starting off with somebody, you know, and, and you have them in an arm bar, um, that's a horrible spot to, you know, yeah, allow yeah. striking. And so he kind of realized that, hey, this is already, you know, this is already a, a ending sequence position. So yeah. we should keep it strictly for jujitsu. Right, right, right. And so... Mike, before um, before we let you go or before we move on, yeah. is what's next for Mike Courier? What where can people see you next? What can people do? What 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 can we expect from you? Yeah, so I've got nothing scheduled uh, for a competition right now. Um, my wife is competing, so she's doing uh, submission on the shore, which is a a super fight event in San Pedro, California. So she's got a super fight on May eighth. And nice. then um, the first week of June, I'm going to Maine um, for the BJJ Globetrotters camp. Um, so I recently did their, their Tempe camp, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great a great program. They do week-long kind of summer camp style, just you think, with like 30 instructors, and we teach a couple hours a day. And then there's like evening activities like skiing and bobsledding or whatever you do. And so um, – Super fun, and uh, I'm excited to be able to take at least the next two months and um, not think about my weight every day, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and be able to just relax and enjoy. You know, I think that um, you have to be so selfish when you compete, and um, being selfish and being a coach is a very hard balance. You know, and so yeah, I feel like I haven't seen my team in like months, and uh, and so I'm excited to get back and just be be a coach and. You know, ultimately, I'm excited about being able to step back and have my guys take my role, you know, and be able to help them become the next guys who are on the wall. You know, our our, our thing at the gym is all of our fight posters run in chronological order on, on the top of the top of the gym wall. And um, if you get a super fight, your poster gets framed on the wall and it's there forever. And so, wow. um, you know, my wife has some posters up there. We got a couple of, of our of our uh, underbelts who have you know, bike to win posters, and uh, 
you know, my, my goal is to, to eventually stop seeing my face on the wall and start seeing my team's face on the wall. Well, Mike, that's going to be hard to do since you've just made this, like, big splash. Uh, like, oh, man, <laughs> just so everyone's going to be like, when's that bloody guy going to go up right. and fight again, right? So, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, uh, we can't We can't wait to see you back, man. I yeah. mean, it's going to be so exciting. I mean, we're going to definitely follow you. We'll, um, you know, we're, we'll share whatever it is that you're doing on our site as well. And, and I know hopefully the people that watch this podcast uh, – you know, start to follow you and start to uh, be inspired by you because I know there's a lot, like we know a lot of people, Prince, that are like competing and stuff like that. I'm sure that at some point they want to get on that professional circuit. They want to try out combat jujitsu. They want to be like Mike, right? Yeah. Hey, so. I get messages almost every day from people asking me, you know, how do you do it? How do, how do you get invited? How do you do this? You know, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, it's, it's not an easy process. It's very kind of esoteric where, Nobody will give you a straight answer and people are weird about it. And I think that, um, you know, I love answering questions, you know, so, um, but I find it very, very hard to say no to about a, a fight. And so, <laughs> you know, I'll be, I'll be 50 years old and still, and still taking fights, I'm sure. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm very, I've always been competitive. Like I said, every step along the way, it's been me competing in something. And, uh, I have a hard time imagining myself not doing that. Hey Mike, can you just do us a big favor, man? So when yeah. in your next in your next match, can you can you do something for us? So when you get into a fight with this guy, can you maybe uh, suplex him and put him in a rear naked chokehold and give him a big shout out to fight inside? Hey guys, I did it for you guys. I'll probably get disqualified, but I'll yeah for sure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's yeah, we don't we don't care about that, Mike. What are, oh. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> where can people find you, Mike? So uh, for the Instagram, like we said, we'll put it down here. But in case yeah, people yeah. are listening on Spotify or they're listening on Apple Podcasts, where can people find you? Yeah, I you know I'm I'm really only active on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, that's just Michael Courier BJJ. Um, okay. I post every day. I post everything from technique videos to um a lot of self-deprecation videos and uh you know I, I post me doing backflips in the backyard and uh skateboarding and technique videos and competition stuff and just kind of you know day in the life of of, of what i do every day so um i do have a youtube page uh i don't use it very often but i post all my matches win or lose um on my youtube page i also post some kind of technique videos and movement stuff uh, mostly for my team, but it's open for anybody to watch. And that's just um, BJJ underscore MVMT. So like BJJ movement on YouTube. Awesome. Mike, and if Mike, I swear you have a TikTok account. You're just lying to us. Just give me one sec. I'll find it. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and if Mike's, 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 he's like, what are you talking about, man? And if Only you are fans. But not Only TikTok. fans, yeah. And if you are somehow in Fountain Hills, Arizona, definitely check out Mike's gym, Impact fountain hills right and like yeah that's we love having so guests definitely you know, we're, we're in a beautiful little town uh we have guests in town like literally every week somebody stops in and so uh you know we we never charge a drop-in fee um everybody's welcome all affiliations you can stay on my couch you can stay in my guest room um seriously like i just i love people man so uh anybody no, awesome. anytime you can if you're, if you're listening to this message me on instagram say hey, i'm coming over and uh i'll have food waiting for you Wow. Nice. That's awesome. Mike, you seem like such a great guy, man. I appreciate you being on this podcast so much. Do you mind sticking around for a couple of things? No, not Do you about have time? Yeah, of course. Yep. Uh, Prince, before we get to the fight on site, because mm. it's this weekend, I just wanted to ask Ben Askren versus Jake Paul. Mike, we talked about this fight seven weeks ago when we did our first episode, which we never released because it was kind of choppy. So we gave up on it. Uh, but we are now days away from the fight. You see the training videos of these two guys. You see the interactions between them. What do you think? Who's going to win this fight, Mike? Paul's going to win. What? Yes. Oh, yes. No. Mike. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Mike, please share Listen. your rationale. Why? Why? I, oh. I am honestly, I'm a huge <laughs> Ben Askren fan. I have been forever. I, I was like, Watching him, hoping he'd be in the UFC for years and years, yeah, and years yeah, and years, yeah. Right? He just had hip surgery, and he says that a lot of his downfall has been his bad hips for like a decade. So I think he'll look good, but boxing is boxing is different, man. And I think that you know you, you see it with even like McGregor versus uh, Floyd, right? Like it was, it's not the same pace, it's not the same rules, 
Um, your ability to clinch, to stop damage, and to just stall things out. Uh, I, I think I think I think Jake looks bigger. I think he'll be younger, fitter, stronger. Um, and I think even though Askren is the far superior martial artist, I think in the boxing rule set, uh, I think Paul wins. Oh man, this is so bad. I'm so I'm not happy about it. I am not happy about it. No, that. no, this is your professional opinion. Yeah. Prince, Prince, what are you saying, Prince? Hey, look, man, who's got who out of the three of us, who here has a fight record? Mike does. So I'm definitely saying I'm I'm going for Paul. Because Paul, you know what? He's been training with Mazdoff. He's been like like he's look look at what he did to um Nate, uh, Nate Robinson not too uh, a couple fights ago. Um he's been, you know, he's training well and he's jacked. Like he's he looks yeah. like he's really focused. Like and you could see his strikes. Man, it's I think he's he's gonna he's gonna stun a couple of people, man. Yeah. Oh we all lose I because can't. of it, just so you know, right? The, the whole fight world is lesser because yeah. of this <laughs> yeah. result. Yeah, but, yeah, so. yeah, we're all in trouble. Uh, yeah, it's not good. No. Okay, man, I was hoping you guys were going to say Askren so I, I could say to. Jake Paul. I, I'll, t <laughs> I'll tell you, the thing that I am so nervous about is every time I watch Ben Askren training, and I, I know these are videos that he's doing to send out and all that. Yeah. But have you seen where he has his punching bag with Jake Paul's face on it? I, have you yeah, seen that? I have. Okay. So the problem with that is Jake Paul's face is low on the bag. Yeah. And so when he's punching, he's punching low. And yeah. I'm like, this guy is way taller than you. So unless you're practicing all body shots, you, I feel like your muscle memory needs to punch a little higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he released a video, I think it was yesterday, where he's uh, might have been an open workout or something, and his coach is holding pads low yeah. again. And I'm like, what? Come on, man. Like, you got to, like, your coach should be muscle memory to be holding them up high yeah. for you. Yeah. Because again, he's punching, he's punching his shoulder height. Right. And I'm like, that is Jake Paul's nipple height. Like, yeah. I, like what are you <laughs> aiming for? My my wife is is shorter than I am. I'm six two, so I'm, my wife is shorter. When we do train, she always holds like this. Yeah, you know, like she's holding yeah. me up here because I ask her to because I'm like, hey, I can't be punching down like this. Right, right. You know, I I gotta punch at least head height, and she hates it because you know it's so tiring to hold oh, yeah. up here. But you gotta do that for yeah. that reason. I, Forget it. I'm still going Ben Askren because I cannot <laughs> believe that he's going to lose. But if he does lose, that is why. But yeah. Tim, Tim I, I, I think you know when they sh they you know, they promote all these like these videos and they show it all online. They just you know mm -hmm. they they sh it's all for show. It's for the hype. You know they do these little things here and there, like oh they're doing this on this this wrong, and then come fight time they're like whoa okay I didn't see that coming. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah so yeah. it could just be for the hype, right? You know, so, you know what to tie. Okay, here's the thing. To tie this around, because because I, I am amazing at making things come full circle here, Mike told us about how he is an an athlete overall, right? Everything he's done, he's excelled at. He's excelled at the inline skating, excelled at Cirque du Soleil, excelled at uh, gymnastics. Now excelling at BJJ. There's people that are just natural athletes and that are and that have the ability to succeed in whatever they do. I'm going to pray to God that that is Ben Askren <laughs> and, that, and that he can be a wrestling guy. He can be an MMA guy. And for God's sakes, he can be a one fight boxing guy and win this fight. That's, I mean, natural athlete. That's what I'm going to get. I hope so. So Mike, so Mike, you've never, it's so bad. Let, let me ask you, Mike, have you ever been cut from a team at all or ever felt the, 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 the pain of being cut? Yeah. So, when? Okay. So, Let's see, I was, uh, I'm, I'm 40, right? So I, I was yeah. like, I was middle school, like the height of Michael Jordan era, right? Okay. I, I was the biggest basketball fan ever. I play, I had, I played basketball every single day. I practiced all my moves. I was, I had all the starter jackets. I was, I was basketball, everything. Did you ever have a Toronto starter jacket? And so, no, I didn't. Oh, <laughs> damn it, I'm sorry. Neither um, did I. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I went in and I, I tried out for basketball 
in seventh grade or grade seven and um, I was cut and um, my coach said hey maybe you should stick to wrestling and <laughs> and, uh, and and you know and and, and that, that was that was a good call you know I was devastated obviously um, oh and then grade five I played football mm. and uh, I was not I mean I don't even want to have some, some, my, my coach yelled at me or whatever mm. and uh, I took my helmet off and I threw it at my coach and I ran home and cried and uh, <laughs> never played football again. So, wow. so, yeah, I'm terrible at football, terrible at basketball. Mike, um, I, I think that's the, the I think that's, I think that's the only thing I have one up on you. The only reason why I made the basketball team in elementary school is because we didn't have enough players. Like we, we <laughs> literally, if I left, there would have only been four players to play in that team. So they'd be like, Prince, we, 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 <laughs> Prince, we somebody. Need, Prince, we need you. I'm like, I got you guys. I got you guys. And that was a co-ed team too. So yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's even more. Oh, brutal. Uh, Mike, the last segment we do on the show is something we call fight on site. So this is where we do a fantasy fight. Prince and I both pick someone. We'll go through this kind of quick because I know we're running long. Not I appreciate good. it. Uh, we're in honor of you. We are doing BJJ edition. Uh, so we will both pick a fighter to go up against one another. This is uh, fantasy, so don't worry about age. Don't worry about weight class. Don't worry about gender. Uh, okay. Prince, who is going first? Uh, can you go first? Because I think Mike's going to like oh. my pick. No, he's not going <laughs> to like your pick. He's, no, he's going to love my pick. I think All he's right. going to love My pick is, and I voted against her on the podcast last week, but when I posted my picks, I picked her, Mackenzie oh. Dern. All right. Oh man, Mackenzie Dern on last weekend changed my mind. She oh. seems to be making the weight cut incredibly yep. easy now. Like she, she shows up, she looks good, she's healthy, she's happy. She looks jacked. Yeah. Her, her striking is very impressive. And we all know her ju her jujitsu credentials, right? She is sure. massive in the jujitsu. I feel like she is a she is a problem for anyone in the strawweight division now. Um, you know, Nina Ansaroff, she tried to keep her way as best as she could with long jabs and distance. The minute Dern gets you to the ground, it is lights out over. Like you are getting finished. She has such a great finishing rate. She's eleven and one now. Uh, Mackenzie Dern, man, she's going to be champion by the end of 2022. Guarantee. Like, I don't, I think her next fight should be Ioana. Yeah. I think, I think she should take on Ioana, get rid of her, finish her off. Uh, and then, and then move on to the title because uh, her versus Wei Li would be very interesting if Wei Li can continue to hold the title. But uh, I don't see any of these girls having the jujitsu to stop her. I think she's going to finish a bunch of people. So Prince, that is my pick. Okay. Good All luck. Right. So, all right, so my pick for today's BJJ edition is not only but the late great Helio Gracie. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Mike, do I need to say more? Like, what do I have to say, man? This is the, the godfather <laughs> of the godfather of jiu-jitsu. Um, actually, like the little research on him. So Gracie founded and developed the self-defense martial arts system of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, also known as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, you know, the head of the Gracie family, this guy, he, you know, he is the one who developed it all, right? And so, um, you know, I, I, there's not much I can say, you know, after that. Like, Mike, what do you think? Like, <laughs> like Mike, look at Mike. Hold on, hold on. We're so, talking. The, the, <laughs> so the question is, yeah. Helio... Versus Mackenzie Dern. In a jiu-jitsu match. Yes. Or in, in MMA. Jiu-jitsu match. Jiu Wait, can we, match. Can, we do M can we do MMA? Like, give me a chance. Either way, either way, the fight lasts maybe, we're talking both in their prime, right? Both weigh yeah. the same. Okay. All, everything's equal. Yeah. Right? The fight is done less than 30 seconds, and Helio is dead. Dern wow. easy, not even. Wow. Why? Why do you say that? From a master jujitsu yeah, so practitioner, jujitsu has evolved so much that I think um, you know. Even if you look at like uh, you know guys like Hicks and Gracie, 
Hicks and Gracie's incredible, mm-hmm. right? Yes, At one yes. point, he was like 300 and 0 or some crazy record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, if you put Hicks and Gracie versus like Buchecha or like Kanan Duarte, um, they're not even close to the same round. You know, I think that a bl- what, what a black belt knew 20 years ago is like what a blue belt knows now. Wow. Okay. Because the, the, the world because the world has changed. Yeah. The world has changed, as well. You know, I mean, uh, the internet and 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 being able to learn from different people and being able to have, like I said before, man, Barambola wasn't a thing six years ago. People were thinking, you know, they they thought it was like this blip of of, of time, you know, and and you know, leg locks weren't a big weren't a big play. Right. Um, right. You know, the, the game has just evolved so much that I think, um, I think I think that modern jujitsu you know, uh, just dominates in, in every, in every facet of it. That's so interesting, Mike. I knew I liked you for a reason, (laughs) but I mean, he never picks my pick. So, but you know, you know what? I wasn't expecting that. I honestly, if you bring out the guy who invented the thing, of course you'd pick that guy because he's the one who developed the whole, the whole martial art. Right. But I mean, the way you explain it, I mean, yeah, it's true. Right. And I mean, over the years it just developed. And so if they actually got into a role, It'd be a totally different story. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just you know, if, you, if you guys haven't watched it, right? Mackenzie Dern had a match, uh, Nogi World Championships against Gabby Garcia. Yeah, right. I and, saw and, that. And, and, and yep. Mackenzie wins, right? Yep. And crazy. Like, That's crazy right? but I mean, too. But to to think that any traditional martial artist could be as big as Gabby and not win through traditional martial arts. Right. It shows you that 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 the evolution, the the arts aren't even similar. I mean, I think I think if you if you brought Haleo back and put him in a room and had him watch, you know, Craig Jones teach a class, I don't think Haleo would recognize that as Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's 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 as different as Aikido is from Hapkido is from Jiu Jitsu is from wrestling is from Judo. Right. Like they are at, 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 at a brief glance they are similar but upon any deep inspection modern jiu-jitsu is vastly different from anything that even was a thing in the 80s or 70s or 60s wow okay all right well you know what uh mike the only way we'll figure this bad boy out is if we put it in the fight on site simulator this oh. is uh, uh you oh so you know what yeah the, exactly that's the reaction i wanted to hear <laughs> because this is right here is an 80 million dollar simulator that we've put in together we've actually developed it over the years to put all the fighters profiles everything in put it into this machine and say hey you know what this is what's gonna you know give us the right answer who's gonna come on top and this is a fight on site simulator represent mike mike here we go are you ready man this is uh, it this yeah. is ready. all right so for uh for our mackenzie dern Fight similar simulator picks. Captain America. All right. So we've got. Is that a sticker today? It's a sticker. Okay. Not Good. on a popsicle stick or anything. Just you're holding no, it just, this time. I'm, I'm holding it this time because you know he normally he normally puts it on a stick or a popsicle yeah, yeah. or a yeah. straw, but this time doesn't even bother. No, because you know what? It kept sticking onto the popsicle stick, and I can't really get the re- actual reaction and the actual kicks and all that. So $80 million. And you $80 million. Dollars. Like, look at this, man. Come on. I'm sweating right. buckets over here. Next. And next, the one and only, our representation of Mr. Gracie, the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. See, this is perfect. There you go. Here we go. Mackenzie Dern comes on top. What? Mike, you're really lucky that he didn't ask you to do the sound effects. I was kind of jealous. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I thought, man, they have a sound guy. They have like this professional person who just makes a sound effects. It's crazy. It was, it was really good. I was, I was so impressed. The money, the money we invest, Mike. (laughs) That's it. And you know what, you know what it was, you know what the simulator heard the explanation from your end, Mike. And wow. Like uh, I wasn't expecting, that uh, man i swear he was gonna pick uh gracie man for sure yeah. i'm like oh, this guy's gonna he knows <laughs> i know the answer 
And uh, actually, you know what? So my uh, Tim actually let uh, let him know what's the record so far between the two of us in terms of. Oh, it's uh, really bad, Mike. I'm losing like five to one, six to one. Oh, it's it's pretty bad. I got to look it up. Every time I pick someone, like I had Fifty Cent versus Michael Jackson, and I lost. <laughs> People picked Michael Jackson, <laughs> like by a mile. Mike, like I, really bad. Mike, I picked Mike. I I I was the one who picked Michael Jackson, man. Oh my god. Yeah, brutal. <laughs> Mike, it could not go worse for me. Uh, Mike, this was incredible to have you on as a guest, man. Oh, thank you I, so much. I appreciate you coming on so much. You've been such a nice guy to us on social media. Um, your social media is incredible. Again, people, please do go and follow Michael Courier. His his Instagram is great. Uh, follow his matches. Follow his fights. Cheer for this guy, man. This, I mean, man, you are such a likable guy. Uh, we wish you all the best in your continued successes and uh, with your gym and wish your wife success on, on her next fight, man. That is crazy. That's that's exciting for her. She's a brown belt at Impact Jiu-Jitsu. She correct? is, yep. She's yep. a brown belt. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, before we go, Mike, is there anything you want to say? Is there anything you want to leave off with? Give some no, words man, of I wisdom? Say, I, I appreciate you guys. I think, you know, it, it's so cool to be able to tell my story and, uh, you know, get out there and, and uh, I am... You know, I'm floored that anybody wants to talk to me. So uh, no, it, means, man. it means the world to me. It really does. No, thank you, Mike. And and man, there is so much more to talk to you about. I could go on about uh, Cirque du Soleil forever. Jeez, Louise. Uh, guys, please do follow us on Instagram and uh, YouTube at Fight Insight Podcast. If you want to be a guest on the show, if you want to reach out to us, please message us at uh, fightinsightpod at gmail.com. Prince, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, and actually, one last thing, uh, Mike, and also thank your wife for bringing the charger because that right there was like the life. Like, you, you, you guys make it seem like, oh, it was a nonchalant. You're like, hey, you know what? It's it's okay, but thank you, Michael's yeah. wife, for bringing that. She's in. the real like, hero. She's the real <laughs> hero, right? And and I like how I like how I like the Mike the, the this too. How what kind of move was that? Oh this, yeah, this, one of these. One of these. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Nothing yeah. to see here, right? <laughs> All right. So yeah. Well, again, Mike, thank you for having us, and uh, thank you for coming into the show. And I appreciate you, and hopefully we'll have you back on the show next time. And again, yeah, I wish that. you nothing but the success. All right, buddy. All right, guys. Thank you so much. For thank you so much, Mike. Have a wonderful yeah. day. Thank you, yeah, guys. Yeah, Take bye. care.